prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the importance of student-centered approach in education was already emphasized. The system of outcomes-based education has driven educators to strive in order to meet the needs of their digital learners. Integrating technology in class can be of big help as well for educators since learners these days are technologically exposed. Educators are geared towards building an exciting learning expedition to unleash 21st century learners' strong points, expertise, needs, and interests. With that, the title of my study is Personalized Learning and its Impact in Teaching Mathematics on Engineering Students. Good morning, everyone. I am Jano Jal Orsua of University of Antique. Personalized learning means tailoring learning for each student's strengths, needs, and interests. It involves enabling the student to become independent learners. It assists students as well to ensure mastery at the highest standards possible. Slocum 2016 revealed the advantages of utilizing personalized learning as a teaching pedagogy. Consistently, Murphy, Reading, and Twyman in 2016 described personalized learning as an idea that anchors to the relationships of teachers with their students as well as their families. At the present time, many students struggle in mathematics for the reason that it is labeled as the least in terms of needs and interests. As a result, this can trigger anxiety among students who are afraid to fail these courses. Educators teaching mathematics are challenged in finding what pedagogical approach would they employ inside the classroom. In the Philippines, personalized learning is gaining popularity among educators due to its positive impacts towards students' mastery of the content of a specific subject. This aims to determine the effectiveness of the personalized learning approach as an intervention to make first-year civil engineering students improve their problem-solving skills in mathematics, specifically in geometry. Explicitly, this study delved answers to the following questions. Is there a significant difference between the pre-test and post-test results of the respondents in the experimental group? Is there a significant difference between the post-test results of experimental and control group in learning geometry? What are the advantages of utilizing personalized learning to civil engineering students? What are the challenges encountered by the first-year civil engineering students during the implementation of personalized learning? The research design of this study in personalized learning exemplified a mixed-method approach. Both quantitative and qualitative data were gathered in order to answer research questions formulated. 30 participants were purposely selected to represent the control group and the other section with 30 participants embodied the experimental group. Initially, there were three phases observed in this 10-week study which conducted from October 2019 to January 2020. It involves preparation, instruction, and evaluation. The preparation phase includes setting objectives, lesson planning, creating and editing video lessons, and developing activities and assessment. Research instruments such as personalized video lessons, tests, and questionnaire were subjected to a validity test. The topics in geometry which applied for both groups were divided into four, area and perimeter of main figures, volume of polyhedron, volume of non-polyhedron, Papus theorem. In the instruction phase, participants were oriented, responded to informed consent, provided with the learning materials and scaffolds to take ownership of their individual learning. In this phase, both groups were pre-tested from a researcher-made test in a span of 120 minutes, which composed of 30 items. Participants in the experimental group were taught via personalized learning approach as well as students received the treatment depending on the racing and interests. All the participants in the experimental group started in topic 1. After the instruction, they were given a 10-item test to determine who will proceed to topic 2. Participants must acquire at least 8 correct answers in order to proceed to the next topic. Contrary to the experimental group, participants in the control group were taught by means of traditional lecture, discussion inside the learning environment, and given assigned activities to be completed outside the classroom. In the evaluation phase, both groups were post-tested for 120 minutes. Six participants in the experimental group were purposefully selected after the post-test for 90-minute focus group discussion. Quantitatively, to obtain the learning effectiveness of personalized learning approach, the data from the respondents were tabulated, evaluated, and interpreted. The scores were entered into SPSS version 17 using a paired sample t-test and independent sample t-test at 5% level of significance. And if the p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05, 
level of probability the null hypothesis is to be rejected. In order to obtain the qualitative data, a focus group discussion was carried out. A semi-structured questionnaire to guide the flow of the discussion. Then and there, responses were transcribed and verbatimly recorded. Results were then analyzed using thematic analysis. An independent sample t-test on pretest scores was performed to evaluate the comparability between the experimental and the control group. Results revealed that there is no significant difference between the pretest scores of the two groups where p-value is greater than 0.05. In this regard, participants in both groups commenced at the same point. On the other hand, the t-value between the pretest and the post-test of the experimental group was minus 3.671. As reflected, the mean of post-test scores of the experimental group was higher, which is 15.93, than the mean pretest scores of the experimental group, which is 13.83. With this, the null hypothesis is rejected in favor of the research hypothesis. Subsequently, p-value is less than 0.05. Furthermore, the result means that there is a significant difference between the pretest and the post-test scores of the experimental group. The t-value between the experimental and control group was 4.952. Results from the independent samples t-test revealed that there is a statistically significant differences in mean scores between groups after the intervention. With this, the null hypothesis is rejected in favor of the research hypothesis. Subsequently, p-value is less than 0.05. Also, it can be inferred that the utilization of personalized learning in teaching mathematics, specifically in geometry, has positively impacted the student's achievement. This qualitative study provided an opportunity for the participants to express cooperatively about their experiences about implementation of personalized learning. Two superordinate themes that appeared from the discussion include perceived advantages and challenges encountered. These contrasting themes were applied to evaluate and expound the impact of personalized learning in mathematics based on their learning experiences. The findings of this study revealed the perceived advantages in utilizing personalized learning, which include self-paced learning, mastery, greater engagement, self-discipline, and collaboration. This result was parallel to the findings of Hillard and Cargbo in 2017, that each learner should be given a chance to be directly encompassed in his or her personal learning in a variety of modalities. Moreover, Hanover Research in 2015 found out that students improve their classroom academic performance by means of giving them a degree of independence in their learning experiences. Suti in 2018 reiterated that personalized learning promotes a healthy relationship between students and teacher, enthusiasm, and become lifelong learners. There are three sub-themes that emerge under challenges encountered by participants in personalized learning. Dependence on technology and technological devices such as laptops and Android phones becomes the trend in personalized learning. Another challenge to students in utilizing personalized learning is the burden of heavy workload in the classroom. Also, personalized learning is time-consuming in the sense that they have to work based on their own pacing. The challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic has paved the way in shifting the learning styles and modalities in the Philippine education from face-to-face -face instruction to full online. In this regard, this study on personalized learning concluded prior to the declaration of of the World Health Organization of the coronavirus outbreak as pandemic on March 12, 2020. In totality, the findings of this study are based from the experiment conducted with the personalized learning as an intervention as well as the qualitative result from the focus group discussions conducted. Results reveal that personalized learning is an effective approach in improving the student's academic performance in mathematics. The qualitative data from the conducted focus group discussions generated two major superordinate themes which are perceived advantages and challenges encountered from the conclusions of the study. It is suggested that the personalized learning can be introduced to other difficult topics in mathematics and other engineering sciences courses. Educators may even institutionalize the use of personalized learning and other pedagogies may be introduced towards 21st century education in addressing the needs, interests, and strengths of the learners. Accordingly, the researchers may also implement and evaluate results of the integration of personalized learning in mathematics and other courses. And with that, thank you very much. Stay safe and have a good day.